A gated set reset latch is an SR latch that can only change state while it's enabled. For example, imagine an air conditioning system in a building. Each room could have its own cooling unit controlled independently by its own SR latch. The set and reset signals might come from a temperature sensor or a humidity sensor in the room. If these were gated SR latches, then a central control panel could be used to enable or disable the switching on and off of these units on a room by room basis. Here's an ungated SR latch. Remember, an SR latch built from NOR gates like this one is an active high SR latch. This means it requires a high pulse, that's a 1, to be applied at input S in order to get a high output at Q, in other words, to set the latch. Alternatively, to reset the latch and make the output at Q0, it requires a high pulse to be applied to input R. It's invalid for both S and R to be made high at the same time. An SR latch is said to be level sensitive. This means it will respond to a valid change in either S or R, regardless of the duration of the input pulse. It's the level, high or low, that matters, not how long it's applied for. To build a gated SR latch, we can make some simple enhancements to an SR latch. By connecting a pair of AND gates in series with the inputs of a NOR based SR latch, we've created a third input E, which can be used to enable or disable the latching effect. A regular AND gate will only have a high output if both inputs are high, so only when E is set to 1 will a 1 from S or a 1 from R get through to our cross connected NOR gates. Here's an SR latch built from NAND gates. This is a level sensitive active low SR latch. In other words, both S and R are normally high and it requires a low pulse, that's a zero, to be applied to S in order to set it. It also requires a low pulse to be applied to R in order to reset it. By connecting an extra pair of NAND gates to the latch, like this, not only have we created a third input E, we now have a new circuit in which the normal states of S and R are zero, and high pulses are required to set or reset the latch. In other words, our NAND-based latch has been changed from an active low latch into an active high latch. These additional gates on a basic SR latch are sometimes referred to as steering gates. An SR latch without steering gates is said to be transparent. A valid input will affect the output unconditionally. A gated SR latch, on the other hand, is transparent only when it's enabled. It's convenient to give a gated SR latch its own symbol because we can now focus on what the latch does rather than what's going on inside it. The inputs S, E and R are still shown, and so is the output Q and its inverse, not Q. We can illustrate what's going on at any one of the inputs, or the output, on a chart showing changes in voltage against time. At any given moment, the voltage will be either low, 0 volts to all intents and purposes, and representing the binary value 0, or high at about 5 volts, representing the binary value 1. Now, of course, everything can happen very quickly in a digital circuit. Each time interval on this chart could be in the order of a microsecond. That's a millionth of a second. Having said that, for a level sensitive gated SR latch, each time interval might be one second or one minute or even an hour. It really depends on the application. For the purposes of this discussion, it takes no time for the voltage to change from low to high or from high to low. In reality, this transition takes a few nanoseconds, the significance of which we'll ignore for now but come back to in a later video. Let's proceed on the assumption that switching from low to high or vice versa is instantaneous. This gives us the classic square wave that you can see here. 
We now have a convenient way to describe the behaviour of a latch. By stacking several charts together, one for each input, S, R and D, and one for the output, Q, with a common time axis, we can visualise this circuit in action. At the time indicated by the vertical yellow line, the output Q is low. S and R are also both low, but E is high, so the latch is enabled. In fact, in this diagram, the latch is always enabled, so it's going to behave exactly like a simple SR latch without steering gates. As time passes, if S goes high, so does Q. Because it's a latch, when S drops to low again, Q stays high. If S goes high while Q is high, it has no effect. Q is already high. When R goes high, Q goes low. When S goes high again, so does Q. This is normal latching behaviour. Again, we see R going high, so the latch is reset again. The latch is already reset, so another pulse at R has no effect. Now let's examine what happens when E varies. You can see that some of the time E is high and some of the time E is low. We begin with an output of zero at Q and because E is low, the latch is disabled. S goes high, but it has no effect on the output of the latch. Now E is high, the latch is enabled. So when S goes high, so does Q. And when S drops to low again, the latch stays high, until such time as R goes high, and then Q drops to zero again. Now E is zero, the latch is no longer enabled. So if S goes high, it has no effect on Q. E is high again, the latch is enabled, and so it responds when S goes high. The latch is set again. E goes to zero, the latch is disabled. R goes high, but Q doesn't drop, it remains in its high state. To summarise then, an SR latch built from NOR gates can be turned into a gated SR latch by adding a pair of AND gates to it. An SR latch built from NAND gates can be turned into a gated SR latch by adding another pair of NAND gates to it. This also has the effect of changing the SR latch from an active low to an active high latch. A gated SR latch has an additional input E which must be high before the latch will respond to any changes in S or R. The gated SR latch has its own symbol to simplify diagrams. And the behaviour of a latch can be described by means of a timing diagram.